today we're going to go through Augur V2 and beyond. So the idea behind Augur really is to provide, oh, this is actually going forward on its own, okay. So the idea behind Augur is to provide um, you know, universal access to tools that increase and protect wealth through finance and betting. And so this really goes back to this concept of anybody anywhere in the world should be able to create a financial market at home, whatever they want. So that could be anything from a horse race, a soccer match, uh, whether Trump will be impeached, uh, or the price of Tesla at the Friday closing bell. And so our mission, the way we're going to actually do that, is by creating the world's most accessible, no-limit betting platform. And this really goes back to when I was in middle school and I was betting on these horse races. I bet 25 to 30 races a day. And I kind of said, if you're good at it, uh, you'll actually get cut down, so your limits get reduced, and all of a sudden you can't bet very much. And so that's really the problem we're trying to solve. Uh, the limits problem and the, the accessibility problem. So Augur V1 was really a proof of concept. Uh, it wasn't really a great user experience. Um, you know, you had to download an app, it took hours, sometimes days to sync. Uh, you got to get this kind of big landing page. Uh, you connect a wallet. Uh, you had to download MetaMask. Um, and once you got there, you know, there were, the markets were really wide. You couldn't really see that much. Uh, the trading page was kind of uh, indecipherable. You had to scroll down, place your bet, a bunch of text. More text, more text. And, and it was a pretty bad experience. We just wanted to prove out uh, that it was actually possible. We were doing a lot of things people said were super crazy. Uh, people said that you know, it would be impossible to do all this stuff. We wanted to prove that you could do it even if it had a really bad user experience. And so the original plan was release a V1 that was functional but not usable. Then add 0x to allow off-chain trading. So you can get off-chain order placements, cancellations, and modifications. That's really important because it allows market makers to actually market make and reprice their odds, especially in events that move quickly. Then add die, add maker. And the reason for that is if you're betting an ETH, you need to be confident on the ETH price up or down over a time ago in the event you're betting on, uh, which is really difficult. And then finally, release a version 3 that has high throughput and low latency, even on order fills. And at that point, it should be no different than a regular uh, betting or trading site except it allows you to access it from anywhere, there's no limits, and it's global, and it's just a great user experience. And so in Q1 2020, we're gonna release all of it. Uh, V1.5 with 0x, V2 with DAI, and then shortly after, uh, V3 with fast trading. And so here's kind of a preview of, of Augur V2. So the markets are much more condensed, uh, it's much easier to browse. If you log in, there's sign-in options where you can log in with the email, uh, Google, phone number, and then ask as well. So it's a really simple sign-in process. If you want to add funds, you can add them in with a debit card, uh, eventually credit cards. Uh, it's a much more seamless process. Actually using the notes to you'll be able to use DAI only. So you don't need to own Ether at all in any other part of this process. You never even really need to know that you're using Ethereum. I think that's really powerful. And so here you can see someone's betting on whether Trump will win. They enter in and out, they want to buy the price. And then we actually show that it's pending uh, if you want, it just kind of magically appeared like 30 seconds to a minute later. Here it actually gives you kind of real-time updates uh, based on what's happening on chain. Your order is placed, and that's kind of a, a trade in order V2. Don't really even know you know you're using these. And so what's next for Augur is really kind of the master plan part two, which is all these UIs we sort of designed them mobile first, uh, starting with the mobile experience, because that's where about 60% of betting takes place, uh, and then working backwards to a desktop experience. Uh, making tools that make it really easy to market make uh, because having liquidity is super important. Um, focusing on user acquisition and growth and also bringing sort of the offline social betting experience online. Uh, we're going to have some features coming up pretty soon that, that do that. And there's one more thing we're going to do, which is we're going to release a betting UI. So this looks pretty similar to something like Betfair. Uh, it's a little bit more modern and it allows you to back, back and lay uh, individual events. Uh, the numbers there are how much money you'll win if you bet, so 6.3x your money, how many dollars you can bet, and then we're going to eventually release an even simpler version of this uh, that's just really easy to use. And that's, that's basically what we're working on. I guess one really final thing that takes up 10 seconds is in Augur V1, 14% of the markets that were created were invalid. So this is a huge problem that people have historically associated with Augur. After we implemented changes in the end of June to alleviate those problems, of the most recent 143 markets created on Augur, only one of them was invalid. And in V2, we had even more changes to try to lower that even farther. Thanks.